Trader's Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading. Welcome back. You're watching Traders Corner, and as always, I'm joined by Garth McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, welcome. Hi, Julieta. Garth, uh, let's talk about where we are in the markets. Uh, overall, we're at a very high level, but the actual um, day's trade and the ranges that we're seeing are much, much uh, narrower than they were a couple of weeks back, and that's quite dull. It certainly is quite dull. Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were referring to the volatility on the top 40 index, and we were saying how the uh, the range was in, in excess of a thousand points per day, the average true range on some days. And that r volatility really has come out of the market at the moment. And we, we're seeing fairly narrow ranging days, at which, which are quite difficult, not, not a huge amount of you know, movement to work with. Mm -hmm. So it has been a little bit dull from that point of view. But I suppose it is also a case of potentially the, the calm before the storm. And could that storm be a break to the top side to go and make new all-time highs in our market? Or could it be... A, a, preempting a move to the downside where we, we go back and test the bottom of the recent trading range again. So it, it will remain to be seen. Um, obviously these times are a bit frustrating and a bit trying, but it's definitely not the first time that we've seen markets behave in this fashion and it won't be the last time either. And, and I keep reminding myself that we're not far away from the next opportunity. Uh, that, that's the only guarantee I suppose that I can give you in the markets is that the opportunities will never run out. That there will always be another opportunity, even if it seems a bit dull at the moment. Yeah, and I think maybe that's a lesson that uh, has maybe, uh, maybe we've appreciated more fully over the course of the show, uh, especially when you start and you, uh, being on TV, you want to be there presenting a trade every week. Uh, but it's not always the case. And as you say, you might have these periods of, of calm, but something will come around the corner. Yeah, definitely. There always, there always will be an opportunity eventually. Um, you know, on this show, we talk about promoting proper trading principles. And one of, the, one of those proper trading principles that we try to promote is don't force trades. Wait until there's something clear that looks good to do and then act on it. But don't force a trade just because you know, I come here every week and I feel the viewers are watching because they, you know, they want me to put a trade on. Um, at the end of the day, we're also promoting proper trading principles. We're trading for charity, and we're going to try and do the best that we can all the time. So when in doubt, uh, uh, stay out is, is a cliched saying, but it's the truth. And in times like now where it's a little bit dull and there's nothing really interesting me at the moment, I'm not going to go out and force trades. Mm. So, you know, having said that, we've got a few ideas of things to look for this week, but we're not doing any new mm. trades this week. But as you say, having said that, um, I know you want to focus on the S&P 500 because that seems to be where, uh, from whence we're taking our cue at the moment. Yes, that's right. I've got a chart of the S&P 500 up on the screen at the moment. And what you can see is that the market has gone into this relatively narrow range that we're seeing, and it's been the, it, this has actually been the case since the beginning of January for the U.S. markets, and you can see really that the S&P 500 is sandwiched between 1990 at the bottom of that range and 2065 at the top of that range, and it's been bumping up and down between those range boundaries for the whole of this year so far to date. We need to see a break beyond one of those two range boundaries to determine the next leg of direction. So if we break to the top side through 2065, then that would open a move of 75 points to the upside, which would target 2140. And if we were to break to the downside below 1990, then that would target 1915 to the downside. So really and truly, that's what we need to look out for in the week ahead, to look for a break beyond one of those two range boundaries. Okay, um, so that's the bigger picture. Um, and I know that you want to look back home at the general retail index uh, because in fact there is one area which has been interesting this year and that is the retailers um, and even though so many people have viewed them as expensive they have been among the outperformers. Yeah that's right I'm, I'm going to look at the general retail index and then I'm going to look at two retail stocks which have tweaked my interest. It is it, you're right that it's an area of the market that's been performing fairly well even though they are perceived to be expensive um, but if you look at the drivers for the sector we've got two very strong drivers um, which do play into the the hands of consumer spending in the country. One being the fact that interest rates uh, are likely to remain low for, for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Some people have even been suggesting that we could see a rate cut, which at this stage seems a little far-fetched, but you can't rule that out uh, given that our inflation numbers are coming down. We, we're now sort of suddenly moving towards the bottom of the inflation band. So don't rule out the potential for a rate cut at some stage this year. But certainly, if not a rate cut, it looks like rates are going to remain flat for the remainder of this year. Which is, which is a good thing for the retail sector. And then, of course, the second thing is the fuel price. Mm -hmm. um, with the oil price having come down as hard as it has, 
the petrol prices come down and down and down. And I mean, I know when I fill up my car now, it, it's costing me 200 rand less for a tank of petrol than what it was costing just a couple of months ago. So, you know, that, that is obviously a very stimulatory factor for mm. consumer spending in South Africa. I mean, let's be perfectly honest. South Africans are not in the business of going and, you know, saving that money <laughs> yeah. or investing it. Yeah, it's you almost know. like you've got free money after <laughs> exactly. you've filled up your tank and you think, woo, <laughs> exactly. bring all it this, on. All this disposable income, of course it's going to be spent. So that is why we're seeing the retail sector of the market performing fairly well. And if you have a look at the general retail index chart that's on the screen at the moment, what you can see is that it has been trending nicely higher since October last year. Um, it has recently made a new all-time high, and it's begun to consolidate over the last week or two. And that consolidation right now looks as if it's taking the form of a small little bull flag type of pattern. Um, so we'll watch that very carefully in the week ahead. Either it breaks to the top side or alternatively it continues mm -hmm. to come a little bit lower until it eventually maybe meets up with this uptrend support where it would then present quite a nice attractive buying opportunity again, I think. Having said that though, Garth, there are a couple of things which might have shaken uh, the confidence that we experienced maybe even just two weeks ago, and that's the load shedding yeah. uh, and also um, potential tax increases from the budget and everyone seems to be braced for some form of tax increase and I imagine if there was an increase in VAT then the retail sector would probably come off quite sharply. It, it, it could, that's a possibility, um, but remember there's also other sources of where they would look to try and increase taxes as well. I mean capital gains taxes is one that's also been mooted as a possible mm. place where, where um, tax would be raised. You know, I think. And I mean, look, I'm not an economist, and I'm certainly not an expert on this matter at, at all. But my sense is that, in the in the spirit of um, you know the rich paying for the poor, as it were, a rise in VAT might not be very popular. So, but let's see. I, as I say, I'm not an expert yeah. on these things. Okay, well then, let's talk about one, uh, uh, I suppose, rich person's retail company, and that is Woolworths. Um, and it certainly is at a rich price at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, it, look, Woolworths is, 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 is looking good. It's, be, it's moved up nicely. It's recently made a new all-time high, and it's been pulling back um, in line with what we just looked at on the general retail sector. What's interesting here is that the stock broke out through overhead resistance, through, through that lateral area of overhead resistance at 82 Rand. It recently broke out. It's now pulling back, and it's come back to test that 82 Rand support area. Um, it seems to be making a, a falling wedge pattern, and these wedge patterns very often are... Um, are continuation patterns within a trend. So if you look at that and you assume that that stock has basically been rising in a, in a rising trend since October, that falling wedge pattern looks like it would potentially be preempting another leg to the upside. Um, and also what's interesting on this chart, if you have a look at that stochastic over there, it's making what we refer to as bullish reverse divergence. Now what that means is that the stochastic oscillator is starting to now make a newer or lower low. In other words, it's more oversold than what it was on the prior pullback, even though the share price is at a higher, higher point. And that is quite an interesting development. Often that does also result in a move to the upside. So I think w what we're going to be looking for in the week ahead regarding Woolworths is either it needs to break to the top of that uh, falling wedge pattern. That would then signal a buy mm -hmm. signal. And we'd look to buy on that break and then set a stop loss below the lowest point recently of this recent consolidation. Alternatively, if it does continue to trickle lower, then I think somewhere closer to 80 Rand, where this rising uptrend support comes in, that would also potentially line up a nice buying opportunity. Mm -hmm. And you'd probably find that that would also then correspond with your stochastic being fairly oversold. So it's one to watch. I'm, I'm not putting a trade on this week right now, but certainly this is going to be on my radar screen for the rest of the week. God, sorry, just where would the, the lowest point be um, in this sort of consolidation phase? I mean, theoretically, where, what level would you put in a stop loss? Well, at this stage, if it was to break through the top of that wedge today, then, yeah. um, then we would look at the, the most recent low point over there, which was 81 Rand 50. Okay. Um, but in the, in the event that it does come lower and then starts to break out to the top side, then we would look and we'd reassess to see. Effectively, you, you want to look at what is the lowest point in that wedge structure that we're talking about there. Okay. And that needs to be um, your stop loss level. The second share is also one of the, the top performers of the, the retail index, and that's Mr. Price. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Price also just doesn't seem to ever put a foot wrong. I mean, this stock has been a really, really phenomenal performer over the last number of years. 
It's recently gone and made a new high again, and it's now pulling back. Um, this, what's interesting is it broke out through this area of resistance at 248 Rand, and you can see it moved up quite nicely to about 270 Rand thereafter, and has now begun to pull back and consolidate. Um, like what we saw on the general retail index, there appears to be a, a bull flag type of pattern forming over there, which is a healthy consolidation. Uh, I would expect that you know, any, any weakness down towards this 248 Rand area would probably attract some buying interest. And in the event that we saw it coming back below that, then 240 Rand, there's quite strong uptrend support going back to op October of last year. So the way to trade this going forward for the, for the rest of this week is going to be one of a couple of things. First of all, if it breaks out to the top of that bull flag structure, then we would look to buy the breakout. Alternatively, if it pulled back towards 248 Rand or possibly a little bit lower even, then we would look for a reversal in that area to then look to get long. So one of those two scenarios are what I'll be looking at in the week ahead in terms of how to trade Mr. Price. Garth, um, before we have a look at the, the portfolio as we stand, uh, do you get a sense that there are more long opportunities on the long side of the market at the moment or in fact on the short side of the market? And you naturally tend to rather go long of stocks than short, but oh, yeah, well, yeah. Do you, I mean, can you see any trends as far as that's concerned? Well, look, if, if we look at the sectors, the, 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 the financial sector and the industrial sectors are both making all-time highs at the moment and, and just sort of consolidating off of all-time highs. So those two sectors to me are, are clearly you know, areas to be looking to go long because you want to try and get on board the momentum and join in the momentum. You don't want to fight the momentum. Because so. I get a lot of questions asking, shall I short, um, at, at what point would you short Woolies, for example? Yeah. Um, yeah. But rather, uh, as a trader, you'd say just ride the momentum as long as it continues. That's right. You know, the thing is, you've got to, uh, the, the way I like to think about this is think about it like swimming in a river. Which, which direction is the river flowing? And if you want to get somewhere, you want to swim in the direction of the current. So. You want to look to buy stocks like Woolworths. You want to look to buy stocks like Mr. Price. Shares that are making new all-time highs and have strong upward momentum on their side generally will maintain that momentum. So you want to try and get on board that momentum rather than fighting that momentum. Certainly that's my style of trading and I found it works fairly well. So to answer your original question, are there more opportunities to go long or short? Well, you know, there are, there are always opportunities on both sides of that fence. Um, by and large, I'm more of a bull by nature. And one of the reasons I say that is because markets have two tailwinds always. It's uh, inflation and GDP growth or earnings growth. Those are two factors that, generally speaking, mm. will mean that markets will generally trend higher over the long term. So I think it's much easier to be a bull than it is to be a bear. Uh, and I've met many rich bulls in my time. I haven't met any rich bears. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, Garth, so what does the portfolio look like at the moment, given that there hasn't been too much activity over the last week? Yeah, so at this stage, we're sitting with the same as last week, 277,634 rand. So we are up 11% for the year to date, um, one month into the year. So I think that's a pretty decent performance so mm. far. And it's nice to have that profit under the belt so far. The trades that we've completed this year, Rand dollar trade where we were short the Rand, we made 13,000 Rand on that. Sunlum, we were long up until last week, we made 17,000 Rand on that trade. And then last week, viewers might recall, we put a put spread option structure in place. And this is effectively uh, downside protection in the event that the market should pull back, we'll make money out of that trade. But if the market continues to race ahead and move higher, then we, we, don't, we won't lose anything on that structure. And effectively being 100% in cash, aside from the option structure, are you actually getting any sort of return for being in cash at the Well, moment? you do earn a little bit of interest on your, on your account, which is at about 4 4.5%, something like that. So you do get paid a, a little bit of money while you sit in cash. Mm, okay. Yeah. So, Garth, uh, just to end off with upcoming courses? Yeah, I've got a couple of courses coming up now throughout February and into March. Um, CFDs courses and high probability trading courses in Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban. You can see the dates up on the screen there. If anybody's interested in attending any of these courses, please email me, garth at traderscorner.co.za, and I'll send you the information. Okay, great. Garth, we'll leave it there. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Uh, garth McKenzie is founder and editor of Traders Corner. Trader's Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading.